Last year at Shopify's annual conference, Shopify Unite, the company announced a new store design experience. This new store design experience meant that the existing Shopify theme structure was about to be rehauled and the theme customizer completely updated. Fast forward over a year since this new store design experience was announced and it's still not yet available for merchants, but Shopify have been updating their documentation and allowing developers to test out the new store experience through a developer preview store. So in this video, let's take a look at what is coming up in the new version and prepare ourselves for a whole new theme development paradigm. All right, so first of all, if you haven't checked out the announcement video, I encourage you to do so. You can easily find it by searching for the title, Introducing a New Store Design Experience, Shopify Unite Track Session 2019, or something similar. Basically, to give you guys a summary, the new store design experience will allow merchants to add, remove, and rearrange sections through the customizer on products, collections, blogs, and pages. Previously, this was only an option on the home page. So merchants found it frustrating that they couldn't get that functionality on other pages as well. In this new store design experience, you'll be able to have sections on other pages other than the home page and be able to reorder them like you would on the home page currently. Number two, it will allow for merchants to change the sections on the page from product to product. Currently, you have just one product template and you would even need to detect the product handle and make changes inside the theme code use blocks or use alternative templates in order to get a different result from product to product. In the new version, you'll be able to update the list of sections from the store editor for each product page. Thirdly, we'll see sections like header and footer move into the frames folder and be called inside the content for layout using frames.json rather than on your layout file. Number four, it will allow merchants to choose from a predefined set of sections when creating new pages. This is known as starting points. Number five, they're going to standardize schema settings so that merchants can switch between themes without losing all of their settings. And finally, it will allow merchants to draft changes before publishing inside the same theme. So how can we preview this new store design experience? First, you'll need to make sure you're signed up to a Shopify partners account. From here, you just create a new development store, but underneath the section for developer preview, you're going to check the checkbox for create store with transfer disabled to use a developer preview. Under the drop down, you're going to select online store design experience. Then you'll need to go and find the new version of the debut theme, which has been made specifically for this new theme development paradigm. From here, you can have a look around at some of the new folders and files and also check out the new store editor. So what has changed in this new store design experience and what has stayed the same? Well, if I could summarize what all the changes mean for theme developers, it appears that the theme structure is moving out of the theme itself and into the store. Instead of using templates in our theme code and hard coding in the sections, every page on your Shopify site will now be stored as a list of sections at the store level. In addition to this, certain section schema settings will be standardized and stored in a new attribute in section schemas called content. This is because Shopify wants to increase content portability across themes, meaning that if I have a list of sections on the homepage, for instance, and I change themes, then that list of sections gets retained because information gets stored at the store level instead of on the theme. Because of this, we'll start to see less data being stored in our settings underscore data.json file, and hopefully migrating and switching between themes will become much less painful. So let's take a look at what these changes mean for our theme structure. Using the product page as an example, with the current template structure, we write the HTML and liquid code in the product template, but as the template files don't come with their own schema, what you'll tend to see in most themes is a section called product-template or something similar that sits inside the template file. Then other sections are included into the template by using the section liquid tag. Shopify have recognized this and have separated out sections into the categories of page and content. Moving away from templates, Shopify is instead providing a page section for each of the major templates and the sections stored on each page will be managed for us via Shopify's new store editor. 
This list of sections is either stored on a master page or on an optional page for each specific product. The symbol with the four circles connected by lines here indicates sections that are inherited by the master page, but with the exception of the page section, you can override these inherited sections on particular product pages. At first, it might take you some time to wrap your head around this, as this is a whole new theme development paradigm, but at some point it should make sense why Shopify is doing this. The current alternative to this is if you wanted to create multiple product pages with different sections on each, you would have to create a new template file for each product and then select that alternative template on the admin page for that product. Now, this is all done through the new store editor, and when it's ready, it should make for a much nicer experience. There's actually one other category of section in this new version of the store design experience called frames. Frames are sections like your header and footer, which typically you would include in your layout file, but now there is a new file in your config folder called frames.json. Instead of using the liquid tags section header and section footer in your layout file, you'll now put those references inside an object in this frames.json file, alongside any additional attributes you'd like to go on the main div that surrounds the content for layout tag. These sections will be stored in the new frames directory instead of the sections directory. So instead of the current setup where the template file is all that gets rendered inside the content for layout tag and the header and footer are stored on the layout file, the code for including the header and footer moves over to the frames.json file, which wraps the sections around whatever template is being loaded and loads inside content for layout. As you can see from this example on the official documentation, the header and footer are inserted either side of the usual content within content for layout. So under this new sections architecture, sections are now either a frame, a page section, or a content section. And the combination of these becomes your completed page. Looking at these new section types, the code inside each individual section file has virtually stayed the same as before, with the exception of the content sections. Along with this redefined section category comes a new content schema, which separates out the content of a section from other presentational settings. Let's take for instance, a featured collection section. It's safe to say that no matter what theme you're using, a featured collection section will include a link to a certain collection, and it might also have a heading setting as well. Then depending on how the theme is set up, we might have settings for products per row and number of rows showing in a grid, an option to show or hide the vendor, and an option to show or hide a view all button. Looking at all these settings, the heading and the collection field define the content of the section, whereas the other settings are all just about presentation. Given this distinction, Shopify is now changing how you define schemas creating a separate attribute for these content settings and defining a new standard so that a featured collection section from one theme will work the same on another theme. Remember the list of sections is now going into the store and no longer is it going to be defined on the template. So if you can imagine you have a list of sections for the product page that goes like this. A new theme should be able to work with that new list and this is why creating a separate content attribute is so important. Again, it might take some time to get used to these changes, but for now, the new version still appears a long way off. If I play around in the new store editor in the developer preview, I find that a lot of features were still either missing or just didn't work. So despite announcing this over a year ago, Shopify still doesn't appear to have this anywhere near done, but who knows, they haven't made an announcement about it, so it could come out tomorrow or in another year from now. Regardless, it's been interesting to finally dive in and check out some of the changes for myself. There's a few things missing, which I would have thought that would have been corrected in this new version, but yet again, I'm happy that the theme hasn't changed too much and that there's only a few new things to get used to. But what are your thoughts? Have you had a chance to play around with the new developer preview yet? Remember, you can find all the documentation for the new sections architecture on Shopify's official documentation. And as always, if you're interested in learning more about Shopify development, be sure to check the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.